Sanda. Hingalala Kasanda Bakia Sanda. It's Monday morning. Happy Monday. <laughs> Dear patron, it's the beginning of the week. Let's get excited. <laughs> Oh, there was a time in my life when I would moan and groan. I was much younger, of course, and uh, a lot younger, frankly. <laughs> and Monday was like a bad thing for me. As for most of the planet, it's like, oh no, Monday, we're back to the, the daily grind. <laughs> it's Monday morning. It's a happy Monday. You know, and I know that's a, a phrase that has become quite popular across the planet. But I am excited. I am encouraged. I am blessed. And Monday begins daily grind. Daily grind through the week. <laughs> and uh, no doubt you're getting ready for your daily grind. Some of you may have retired. Others of you are in the middle of your, the prime of your life. And you are working away as you secure your family, making sure everyone's growing in strength and etc. Or maybe you are a young guy and girl. Um, I know a number of my podcast listeners are young people. So welcome, guys. Uh, not that I consider myself old, but you would consider me old. <laughs> but I feel as young as ever. I don't know about any of you other ladies and gentlemen out there who are above your 50s. Let me say this to the young people. When you get to 50 plus, I promise you, I can almost guarantee every one of you will still feel just as young in your head as you feel today. And uh, now that's my experience. <laughs> it's from my perspective. I feel like I'm, okay, there's certain things in my physical body that are not working the same. I'm not as strong, which frustrates me. My memory is not as sharp as it used to be, which frustrates me. My eyes <laughs> are not as strong, in fact, substantially weaker really frustrates me um, but overall in my in my and it's because my spirit man is eternal I am young inside you know I am as my father would say full of P and V and I won't explain that on daily grind not appropriate <laughs> it's my it's Monday and you can see I'm bubbling with joy um, I don't mind Mondays it's, it's exciting. There's a whole week ahead um, of opportunity. I'm optimistic. Yes, there's chores. There's regular habitual work dynamic. Of course, we have to have that in a sense. And in a, in a sense, I think it's very healthy in a way. But I make that statement purely from the context um, or position that you like what you do for work. Now, if you don't like what you do for work, that's a whole different conversation and we'll leave it for today. But I would just finish that point by encouraging you, go find what you like to do and, and have a vision and a plan to get to that place and to, to do what you're gifted to and what you have passion for um, as a work dynamic. And I promise you, the Father will order your steps in that direction. Generally, God is quite connected to what we have a, a joy to do as work and a passion and a gifting for. Generally, those things, generally, those all work together under the hand of the Father. So, I'm going to grind today, uh, turn this grinder, I'm going to pray, and um, I'm praying in my heavenly language. This is something the Father, um, as I've said many times on Daily Grind, led me to do. I bought this old grinder from... Uh, now let me say, <laughs> I had this thought the other day, I, you keep saying, Rory, it's an old grinder. Well, it's not, it's a new grinder. But what I mean by old grinder is, it's totally analog, it's, there's no power to it. I mean, the only power you get is from the right arm or from the left arm. That's the only power that comes to it. It's old, it's old technology, but it's very faithful, it's consistent. As long as I put action and energy to it, it delivers flour, if I have seed in here, of course. That's what I mean by old grinder. I turn this grinder, keep my brain and my body focused on an activity that's mundane in a sense. It's just round and round and round. No, I'm not going, oh, I'm not doing that. 
but it's a similar it's a similar attention grabber and my spirit man is praying using my body using my vocal cords i'm praying in my heavenly language by the power of the holy spirit god almighty with little me because of Jesus, because of His blood, because of the love the Father has for the Son, the Son for the Father, and their combined unified love with the Holy Spirit, for me, a creation of the Most High. You and I have been created in the image of the Most High. And so the Father loves me, <laughs> even when I don't love me. And that's quite often, by the way. There are many... <laughs> so I turn this grinder, I pray in my heavenly language, and by doing that, if you read 1 Corinthians 14, 4, 1 Corinthians 14, 14, and in a myriad of other scriptures, pick up John chapter 14, 15, 16, Jesus talks about the helper, the comforter. I am edifying myself when I pray in the Holy Ghost, and my mind is unfruitful. I don't know what I'm praying in the tongue, and that's a good thing, because I am praying the perfect will of the Father for Rory, I guess there are times that the Lord will by the Spirit have me pray in the Holy Ghost for someone else. I know that because I've been given interpretation and I've also been given evidence in terms of people's lives have been dramatically uh, touched in a, in a difficult moment by the Holy Ghost, by the angels, by God's divine intervention. So my mind is unfruitful and therefore I'm not going to limit the perfect will of God, the plans of the Father the boldness, the dynamics, the setup, the circumstances that will come by His hand into my world, into my life, moving me more into His purpose. So it is a, it is a powerful dynamic. I'm building myself up. I'm preparing myself. I'm preparing my circumstances and, and, and future around me. You know, we have that, that, that very much that, that Many have preached this way, basically, God is busy in the room next door, metaphorically. You know, He's preparing and He's going to open up and there's a door that you're going to open and you're going to walk into that room and it's all prepared for you. And uh, the Lord sets, his, sets a table for me before the presence of my enemies, a table of blessing and provision and protection and comfort and encouragement, breakthrough. Um, so that's what I do at this grinder. But I'm going to pray in the Holy Spirit in a few moments, pray in my heavenly language. And I know many of you pray as well with me. And I know there's even one who I love deeply, my better half, who sings in the bathroom getting ready in the morning. She watches Daily Grant by choice. She's one of my patrons and I deeply appreciate it. Beautiful woman of God, my darling Carola. Um, but as we kick off this Monday, because I must turn the grinder. I do want to read one scripture, okay? Just one. It is excellent. And as we go to work this week, I want, I want, I'm encouraging myself because I'm doing some things that I'm not that excited about. They're important things to be done. They, they have responsibility. Um, I'm very responsible. <laughs> I'm going to read Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and you'll get what I mean. But this is powerful. And I do know as I share this, not only with me, but as you guys hear this as well, if you can apply this Colossians 3.23 to this week ahead of us, this is Monday, you're going into work, or maybe you've finished your day already, you're catching up because you're way ahead of me here in Austria, your day's already finished, that's possible. But this week, if we can apply here what we are encouraged by Paul as he writes to the Colossians, if we can apply this, it is a revolution in my work life. I see this in the life of Joseph. I see the, this in the life of many of the saints in this wonderful book, the Bible. So let's read the scripture and then you'll get where I'm going. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. Whatever you do, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, as working for the Lord, not for men. 24, verse 24, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Now think about that. And if you are today working in an environment, in a job, 
and you hate it. This scripture is for you because I know when I've been in situations where I'm doing something I really don't like to do. But in my mind, in my heart, I go, okay, I don't like doing this, but Lord, I'm going to do it as unto you. And then the creator of the entire universe, almighty God, smiles upon little me, little you, and he goes, okay, let's do this. And you might not immediately get the zing of, mm, my father's watching, I'm doing it unto the Lord, I'm getting a reward, my inheritance. It might be, he'll go, okay, come on, let's see if you're really serious about what you're saying. And I know in my life when I've done this, after a while, it doesn't matter who I'm working for. It doesn't matter how they treat my work. I know I'm doing it as unto the Lord. Now, the minute you want to do something for God, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to give the very best you can. If you have some wisdom in your brain. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Now, as you go to work this week, do it with every fiber of your being, with all, your, with all of your focus, with all your energy. I've also worked with a number of people in my life over the years. This spirit resided on them. My very good friend, Bo, who I love dearly, and I haven't spoken to him for a long time, worked exactly the same way. Everything he did, he did as unto God. Didn't matter. Now, when you're doing something unto God and you're doing it with all your heart, and you know God's going to reward you. After a while, it doesn't matter what everybody else starts to say or think or feel. It's irrelevant in a sense. Because you're doing something, you're doing a work, you're doing it to the best of your ability. Now because you're doing it unto God, God starts to bless it. As He blesses it, you start to see favor. You start to get reward from those around you. Why? Because they see this different spirit on you. Look at Joseph. Thrown into a pit by his brothers. The next thing he's... He has, he's, he's brought up by, as a slave, he's brought into the house of Potiphar. Potiphar puts him to work, sees the excellence on Joseph. What's Joseph? Joseph's doing everything with all his heart as unto the Lord. Why? Because he knows God. He also knows God has promised him something in dreams. So he's, he's connected. And as he works perfectly, of course the enemy tries to attack, the wife tries to seduce. The next thing is Joseph's taken out of Potiphar, Potiphar's uh, house and thrown into a dungeon did nothing wrong. But what does he do? The same thing, Colossians 3, chapter 23. What he did, everything. His whole heart, he's doing his work as unto the Lord. Next thing, the head of the jail, the jailer, notices, ah, here's somebody who does a good work ethic. And so, I know in the things that I am doing, I do the best to do the best I can. Now, I don't get always, I don't always get it right, of course. Welcome to life. But, I just wanted to share that with you before I start to turn this grinder. If we can do it as an... And Rory Alec, but what about that person who's wronged me? What about that person who's abused me? What about that person who's taken me for granted? And what about that person who cheated me out of my promotion? And all of it. It's valid. And I know you feel it. I know I felt it. But there is an answer to this. Let's go here. Back to Colossians uh, 3. We read 23, verse 23. And then we went in 24. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. But 24 finishes with this. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And into verse 25, anyone who does wrong will be. You can say that after me. Will be repaid. They will be repaid for their wrong, and there is no favoritism. So, what a man sows, a man reaps. And in the political correctness of the world we live in today, which what we as humans sow, we reap. Men or women, boys or girls, welcome to life. And so, you do it as unto the Lord with all of your heart. You are building up an inheritance. He will bless you. You're doing it unto Him. He's taking notice. Anything that we do unto God, God takes notice. You might not immediately be aware that He's taking notice, but God takes notice. Why? Because He's God. So, happy Monday. I pray you have a wonderful work week ahead of you. And I encourage you as I encourage me, let's do everything in every fiber of our strength with our entire heart. Let's do it as unto the Lord. Amen. 
And I know, maybe not this week, maybe not next week, but eventually there'll be that spirit that is instantly upon you as you're doing this, but will eventually start to impact all around you. And you will not be able to keep away favor, blessing, promotion, people wanting to be closer to you, connect with you. Why? Because everything you're doing is under the Lord. And believe you me, it quickly fixes up what goes on in your attitude, your emotions, what happens in this brain. So that's my thought for the day, this Monday. Come, let's grind. Oh, Randa Katikia Taramata Kashene. Wonderful.